Welcome to FRC Recap, where you're going to get the latest going on in First Through Box competition and in the community. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds. And I'm Nick Jr. And today here on FRC Recap, uh, our guest is Abi. Uh, you might have seen him previously as he was a host slash judge for the Inspire uh, North Carolina FRC CAT event that fun held this past week. How's it going, Abi? Thanks for joining us. It's going good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so lots to talk about here. Let's jump right into our headlines. Uh, starting on our headlines, unfortunately, we have to do so on a little bit of a somber uh, note coming in. And it, it feels bad because this has now been, I think, the third show that we've started out in this uh, factor. But we do want to report out on this that uh, uh, Brandon Paget, a longtime mentor, drive coach, Woody Flowers finalist award recipient on Team 16 Bomb Squad, has unfortunately passed away. Uh, some thoughts that we've received about Brandon, I want, do want to read these off because uh, for those of you who have been in the first community for a long time, there's a good chance that you've met Brandon before. Uh, of course, as a 16 drive coach and somebody who's been in the program for 20 plus years uh, as well, too. So do do want to read us some things, but I'm actually going to play. Uh, somebody sent us uh, a video that his wife posted in the background. Uh, that I think is, is really cool. It just kind of shows his character a little bit on here. And he's doing, uh, I don't know what the proper term for this. It's some sort of water skiing. I'm sure somebody, I don't know, Nick or Abby, if you know what this is, but it looks amazing and badass. So let's read a little bit about this as this is going on in the background here. So uh, Brandon began his, began his Baxter uh, healthcare engineering career at the 1999 First Robotics Regional at the Kennedy Space Center. His first week at work led him to be assigned the Team 16, and he has been an integral part of the team since. He became the design leader in 2003 and drive coach in 2008, including 16's championship win in 2012. Uh, Brandon was the ultimate optimist, but he was also pragmatic. Brandon's voice can be heard at the end of the 2011 documentary that followed 842, uh, who uh, they were at 16's alliance partner that year. And after losing to a mini bot penalty, uh, for those of you who watched this video and, and were around, then you probably have heard this. But at the end of the uh, video, he says, we're done, boys. Uh, so Brandon was heavily involved in the groundbreaking development uh, in medical device and pharmaceutical company industry for Baxter uh, during his time and dedication to Team 16. Uh, as mentioned, showing the screen, uh, just some, some cool stuff, just showing his character. And this was a guy who had a lot of fun in life. So we really uh, want to recognize him for that. But uh, a few more things to uh, speak about on here. Uh, he is survived by his wife and three children. Um, you can view uh, his obituary. I know 16 has posted something about him, um, and it is out there as well. Um, so Brandon's kids are all under 16 and have been on the team the, their entire lives. And for those who had parents that are on the team, you know what I'm talking about for this. So uh, according to 16's social media page, uh, this is what they said. Uh, Brandon's passion and drive inspired us to push ourselves and understand the value of hard work that contributes to success. Uh, so whether uh, that success be on and off the field, he could always count on we could always count on Brandon to bring a smile to our faces. Uh, Brandon was also heavily involved in FLO and FTC. He was an FLO coach and FTC judge for many years. So uh, our hearts go out uh, to those on 16 and past and present, those who have known Brandon for a long time, and of course his family and, and three children that he leaves behind. It, um, a life taken too soon, quite unfortunately. Uh, and, and you can read more if you if you want to get more into. Uh, what happened with that stuff. Uh, but I, I just want to say uh, in general, uh, I, I know I had a chance to meet Brandon a, a couple times, only in brief passing, but you know, I knew I th of him as a 16 coach for a, a long time. So Brandon, you will be missed. And thank you for your contributions to the community. Uh, and those, once again, who knew him for so long, like Meredith Novak posting in chat right now, who I know was uh, close to him. Uh, we, we feel free, Meredith. And uh, uh, we hope that um, whatever comfort it can be there for you can be at this time. Yeah, absolutely. And I know uh, before I move on to the next one, um, I know that a lot of stuff that, um, you know, a couple of people that I've I've been in first for probably you know, six or seven years now. And a lot of people that um, a lot of stuff that I learned from people have referenced um, some stuff that Brandon had done. So mm. um, that's why I put that, you know, hashtag thank you, Brandon, in there in chat. So oh, there you go. Very um, nice. Yeah. Kind of moving on, on to our next headline. How um, should a guy... you know, new chief post uh, happened this week about mentoring remotely. Um, you know, I think that this this is frankly going to be a common issue amongst us all teams. And, you know, hopefully that 
Uh, we have some better news come January, and hopefully we're able to meet in some sort of capacity. But, you know, unfortunately, I, I think that the majority of the first community can agree that um, unless we see a vaccine, you know, in the next couple of months here, and even then, uh, we frankly um, are going to have issues with meeting um, in large groups. So um, a few ideas have been brought up, um, you know, such as solid professor to teach CAD. Um, and one that I really like is the current workshops that are going on with 971 Spartan Robotics. Uh, I think that it's a very generous uh, of them to offer to publicize these yeah. and, you know, uh, that the first community could really use this as a reference point for virtual teachings. And if you don't necessarily, you know, maybe you're, you're only a second or third year team or maybe you're a complete veteran team. Um, I think that uh, referencing to those workshops for very detailed points on specific uh, operations of the team and could be very necessary for your team. So, and then obviously, uh, you know, moving forward, not obviously, but moving forward, we will also be discussing this headline and let's discuss that uh, after Abby's. Yeah, so um, something that uh, is pretty new is there's, an there's a really interesting film featuring inventors and leaders, including the founder first, Gene Kamen, and it's currently available for a free screening through Monday. According to the website, dreamerdocumentary.com, Dreamer is a film for anyone who's been told f phrases like stop dreaming, get your head of the out of the clouds, be more realistic. And this tells the story of ordinary people who became extraordinary by following their dreams. You can check it out at dreamerdocumentary.com. Yeah, I just want to mention on this too, if you get an opportunity, it's uh, I signed up for it uh, and you'll get sent the link. There's uh, six days left if you want uh, to get the free screening. Um, and I'm not sure, I, I, I we had a couple people ask if we could broadcast this on fun. Uh, I'll reach out, I'm gonna guess not just because of uh, how rights work for that. Uh, but if we can, we will, so just a heads up for that. All right, uh, moving on. So uh, those of you might have seen uh, posted in a bunch of places, uh, almost to the point of spam, but a uh, new FLO table has been made available uh, out there, which is quite interesting. It's made out of corrugated plastic uh, that you can pick up. And if you're, uh, if you're active in the FLO uh, community, like so many of us are, uh, might want to check this out. It's quite interesting. It's $130, by the way, not a sponsor hashtag. Um, but we do want to talk about it because it is quite interesting here. Uh, it's a table topper, by the way, which actually I really like because it's it's uh, light, uh, uh, light and easy. It's made out of four millimeter corrugated plastic on there, uh, and it's made by uh, Geyer uh, Instructional Products. Uh, and we haven't seen too much in reviews, but I, do, I did read one uh, that I saw posted on a on a group site. Uh, so a few things. Uh, first thoughts are uh, lightweight, easy uh, to put, assemble. Uh, unfold and put the walls together with Velcro and the walls uh, unfortunately don't seem to be sturdy enough uh, for wall or lineman uh, and going to test uh, how it sees uh, under how, how it, uh, excuse me we're going to test see how under how it would uh, support at a higher level uh, so the website claims that while it suggests a solid surface below the topper that they uh, recommend an overhang no more than 12 inches to ensure stability of the uh, table to support uh, an FLO robot. So, uh, so Nick, uh, Abby, I don't know if you're uh, how involved you are with FLO, but it, it, are you guys involved in FLO? Would this be something you'd be interested in trying? Uh, yeah, really quick. So I am, uh, my position, you know, at the school that I work with is kind of uh, mainly, you know, it's I, my technical title is first robotics, but I do a lot. Um, you know, I try and help out the FLO when I can. And frankly, they meet in a cafeteria so the lunch tables and that kind of thing, the hardest issue is getting those flipping tables in there, man. So if we had the table topper and set that on, you know, one of those nice long lunch table, um, it would be, you know, super easy for us at least. And I've actually sent this to a couple of mentors um, thinking about using it. So thank you to uh, Gary uh, Instructional Products yeah. for doing that. Abby, are you involved with FL at all? Yeah, so um, our team actually doesn't do that much FLL outreach just because our the infrastructure in our area is more geared towards the VEX programs. Sure. So those are the programs we work with mostly, but we have worked with independent FLL teams in the past a lot. So for example, um, I guess last year we actually, we were working out of a Microsoft conference room at the time because we were still um, trying to find a space for our first season. And at that time we, like in the conference room right next to us, there was an FLL team that was struggling to get a robot together. And I feel like this type of thing would be super helpful for them just because mm -hmm. they also don't have that sort of permanent workspace where they can actually do this type of thing, at, like set up a full wood table. So I think this sort of um, very easy to set up and portable table would be extremely helpful for teams in that situation where they don't have that permanent meeting space, but can set something up really quickly on like another surface. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. 
Uh, so kind of moving on here, um, Tyler is the one that actually kind of brought this up. And uh, frankly, I know nothing about it, but reading into it, I, my entire programming team has set, seen it now. And uh, I frankly just think it's pretty interesting. So um, kind of moving on here, um, you know, this is a topic that not a ton of people might not know about, but I guarantee you a good chunk of the FRC community is involved in it. So um, what, what's happening here is if your team has published a public repository on GitHub, um, you know, you're, you're a part of this. GitHub has created an Arctic vault uh, that will be essentially storing the, the world's open source, open source uh, software for, you know, the next thousand years. Um, any repository that was public or open source on GitHub before February 2nd, 2020 will be stored in the GitHub Arctic vault. Um, and I'm kind of got to read a link here that's directly from the website so you guys can get a kind of get a gist on what this is. But the GitHub Arctic code vault is a data repository preserved in the Arctic World Archive, a very long term archival facility 250 meters deep in the permafrost of an Arctic mountain. Holy crap. <laughs> the archive <laughs> is located in a decommissioned coal mine. In the Svalbard, forgive my uh, pronunciation, but Archipelago, uh, closer to the North Pole than the Arctic Circle. Yeah, it's uh, really far capture... north, by the way, if you yeah, haven't seen it's it. It's really far, it's yeah. really far north. Uh, GitHub will capture a snapshot of every active public repository on February 2nd and preserve that data in the Arctic Code Vault. So I'm going to drop a link in chat real quick, and uh, so you guys can kind of, you know, if you have a... Uh, an interest in reading up on this, but I re I spent an hour at work today reading on this while I was on the clock because it was so interesting. So, um, you know, if you guys take the time, look into it. But I mean, I know my team uses GitHub. I know majority of FRC teams use GitHub to you know organize their programs. And if you have some public repos from previous years that you have released to the FRC community, there's a good chance that you're part of this. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'll be moving on. All right, so yeah, on a more serious note, um, there have been a lot of um, recent events and stories about um, the need for more equitable and accessible environments in FIRST programs. And so to, in response to this, several members of the community have made an Equity First initiative to provide resources and advocate for a better future for the program. They have a petition to mandate ED and IA training for all FIRST volunteers and have a Discord server to advocate for changes and provide resources for people who, like, somebody who's leading a program who might not know where to go. These, um, the server is an amazing resource. I've been on it for a week or so, and it's definitely really helpful as far as resources go. And um, yeah, you can learn more at equityfirst.card.co. All right, let's uh, wind up here. Uh, interesting topic that has been thrown around in uh, one incarnation or another. We've seen this over the years, but uh, a little bit more serious discussion. Some good stuff going on at Chief Delphi this past week, by the way. Uh, so, and that's been the existence of a professional robotics league, uh, or the you know non-existence of it. One of the two things uh, with that. But let's talk about that a little bit. So, uh, so starting out, let's give some credit uh, uh, to Robo One Four Seven asking about. Uh, professional robotics league if it could be something that's actually viable and then eric klein posted a uh, a poll on here uh saying uh the direct question is would you be interested in a pro robotics league or would you not be interested in a pro robotics league and uh, i actually put the no of which we'll talk about uh in a little bit as well uh and, and nick i don't know if you responded to this uh, uh yourself but uh yeah i also put no oh really <laughs> interesting okay yep. so uh so something i guess we'll, we'll talk about on this is uh uh there are a couple examples out there one of them being if you haven't seen is a robo master uh competition uh that takes place in china uh and uh they actually uh send over a couple of u.s commentators uh each time to to help try to translate this even though none of the text is but for those of you uh esports people out there uh this is essentially a moba uh, and the way that they're controlling these robots is actually through a screen. So they're doing it FPV on here. They're not actually watching the robots as they're controlling the field. So if you look in the lower right, you can actually see what, what they're seeing as they're moving on the field, and that's what their HUD looks like. Uh, so these are about the size of FTC robots, and you uh, notice them using mechanum wheels uh, as well, too. So a lot of similarities uh, to what it is. Um, but like I said, we'll talk about this more and let's discuss that. But, you know, there is something out there, and really the question is going to be, can there be more? So, chat, we'd love to hear from you uh, as we get into our list to discuss that in just a little bit. Let us know what you think. Could there be a professional robotics league uh, to scale uh, more specifically in uh, areas that first uh, uh, tends to be more involved in, though there is some involvement in China? Love to hear what you say uh, on that, and we'll read that off in just a little bit. 
Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.